We're back. So uh, what I have here is a basic HTML for a written document. And what we're going to do is we're going to crack this open in our code editor, take a look at the code, and then we're going to compare and contrast it with an HTML5 document. It's basically the same. It's the same document, just written in an HTML5 manner. So let's do that now. So to the right is our HTML4 document, and to the left is the exact same document opened up in our code editor. At the very top of the document, you'll notice it says doc type, and it's an HTML4 doc type declaration. Inside of the head is an HTML4 style character encoding, and both of those should be familiar to you based on our last lesson where we went over the HTML5 equivalents of both of those. Inside the body tag, you'll notice that the first div has a class of page box, which encapsulates our entire page. Below that is another div with a class of header, and that's all of our header information. So we have a header title, my blog, and we also have a navigation panel with three links, about, portfolio, and contact. Scrolling down, the next div has a class of content pages, and that is a div that encapsulates the rest of the content in the page, and beneath that is another div with a class of sidebar, and that's our sidebar panel. It has a header called sidebar, and also has a series of divs inside of it with the class of widget that I created just to denote that anything that's related to the page, you can pretty much post there. So I added three links just for demonstration purposes, types of cats, some more info related to cats, and dogs, the arch enemy of cats. So scrolling down, our next series of divs all have a class of blog post, and each one of those has an ID of blog post with a number, so blog post 1, blog post 2, blog post 3 and they all have a header and their own respective content wrapped in a paragraph tag. At the very bottom of the page there is a div with a class of footer and that's pretty self-explanatory. It's the, it's the footer for the page and that in a nutshell is an HTML4 document. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at an equivalent HTML5 document of the same page. So to the right we have our HTML4 document and to the left we have our HTML5 document. So let's just go down the line and compare and contrast these. So on the HTML5 side, the first custom tag that we have is the header tag and it's right below the div with a class of page box. Well on the HTML4 side, that same functionality is being supplemented with a div and a class of header. So what is the header tag exactly? According to the W3C, the header element represents the header of a section. It must not appear at the center of the footer element. It must not appear at the center of the address element. The address element is an element that we haven't discussed yet. And it must not appear at the center of another header element. So moving right along, below our header element, we have an H1 element with a class of header title. And right below that we have a navigation menu, and on the HTML4 side we basically just have a div with a class of navigation, and then on the HTML5 side we actually have an element called nav. The nav element is simply a grouping of navigational links. Once we get past the header element on the HTML5 side, the next element in the page is the main element. On the HTML4 side, we supplement that using a div with a class of content pages. So what is the main element? The main element represents the main content section of the body of a document or application. The main content section consists of content that is directly related to or expands upon the central topic of a document or central functionality of an application. Continuing on, authors must not include more than one main element in a document. They must also not include the main element as a child of an article, a side, footer, header, or nav element. So basically the main element is intended to encapsulate the main content of your page, and it's only intended to appear once in your page. So moving on, below the main element we have another element called a side, and in our HTML4 equivalent page, if you notice, that is the sidebar. So typically, uh, traditionally in an HTML4 document, you would use a div with a class of sidebar to denote a sidebar, but now we have an aside element intended exactly for that. The aside element represents a section of a page that consists of content that is tangentially related to the content around the aside element. 
and which could be considered separate from that content. Such sections are often represented as sidebars in printed typography. Moving right along, on our HTML5 document, the next two HTML5 elements are section and article. If you look on our HTML4 page, there is no equivalent of the section tag. The section tag is being used to encapsulate all of our blog post articles. So what exactly is the section tag? The section element represents a generic section of a document or application. A section in this context is a thematic grouping of content. The theme of each section should be identified typically by including a header, H1 through H6 element, as a child of the section element. If you look right below the section element in our HTML5 document, you'll probably notice the H5 tag where it says Recent Posts, and you might be wondering why is that there? Well, according to the specification, you are supposed to have a title tag that is a direct child of the section element. And I didn't want the emphasis to be on this title, I wanted the emphasis to be on the article titles, so hence why I used H5 instead of H1 or 2 or 3. And that brings us to the article element. In our HTML4 document, each one of our hypothetical blog posts is being represented by a div with a class of blog post. In our HTML5 document, each one of those same blog posts is being represented by an article element. So what is the article element? The article element represents a complete or self-contained composition in a document, page, application, or site that is in principle independently distributable or reusable, e.g. in syndication. This could be a forum post, a magazine or newspaper article, a blog entry, a user submitted comment, an interactive widget or gadget, or any other independent item of content. So moving all the way down to the end of our page, our last element is the footer. So let's take a look at that one. The footer element represents a footer for its nearest ancestor, sectioning content or sectioning root element. A footer typically contains information about its section, such as who wrote it, links to related documents, copyright data, and the like. When the footer element contains entire sections, they represent appendices, indexes, long colophons, verbose licensing agreements, and other such content. So now that we're done comparing and contrasting an HTML4 document with an HTML5 document, you should have a basic overview understanding of the following elements. Header, nav, main, aside, section, article, and footer. So that's basically the end of this video. Until next time, bye-bye.